Tengrism, also known as Tengriism, Tengarism, or Tengrianism, is a Central Asian religion characterized by shamanism, animism, totemism, poly, and monotheism, and ancestor worship. It was the prevailing religion of the Turks, Mongols, Hungarians, Bulgars, Xiongnu, and, possibly, the Huns, and the religion of the several medieval states, Gokturk Khaganate, Western Turkic Khaganate, Old Great Bulgaria, Danube Bulgaria, Volga Bulgaria and Eastern Turkia Khazaria. In Irk Bitig, Tengri is mentioned as Taruk Tangrizi, God of Turks. Tengrism has been advocated in intellectual circles of the Turkic nations of Central Asia, including Tatarstan, Beriatia, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union during the 1990s. Still practiced, it is undergoing an organized revival in Sakha, Caucasia, Tuva, and other Turkic nations in Siberia. Burkhanism, a movement similar to Tengrism, is concentrated in Altai. Kuk Tengri means, blue sky. In Mongolian, Mongolians still pray to monk Kuk Tengri, eternal blue sky, and Mongolia is sometimes poetically called the land of eternal blue sky, monk Kuk Tengrin Oron by its inhabitants. In modern Turkey, Tengrism is known as the Goktanri Dini. Sky God Religion, the Turkish Gok Sky and Tanri God correspond to the Mongolian Kuk Blue and Tengri Sky, respectively. According to Hungarian archaeological research, the religion of the Hungarians until the end of the 10th century before Christianity was Tengrism. Topic. Relationship with shamanism The word, Tengrism, is a fairly new term. It is conventionally used to describe a form of Tengri centered shamanism that prevailed on the Eurasian steppes mostly among early Turkic and Mongol Khanates. Tengrism differs from Siberian shamanism in that the polities practicing it were not small bands of hunter-gatherers like the Paleo-Siberians but a continuous succession of pastoral, semi-sedentarized khanates and empires from the Xiongnu Empire founded 209 BC till the Mongol Empire 13th century. Among Turkic peoples it was radically supplanted by Islam while in Mongolia it survives as a synthesis with Tibetan Buddhism while surviving in purer forms around Lake Kofsgol and Lake Baikal. Unlike Siberian shamanism which has no written tradition, Tengrism can be identified from Turkic and Mongolic historical texts like the Orkhon inscriptions, Secret History of the Mongols and Altan Tobchi. However, these texts are more historically oriented and are not strictly religious texts like the scriptures and sutras of sedentary civilizations which have elaborate doctrines and religious stories. On a scale of complexity Tengrism lies somewhere between the Proto-Indo-European religion a pre-state form of pastoral shamanism on the Western steppe and its later form the Vedic religion. The eastern steppe where Tengrism developed had more centralized, hierarchical polities than the western steppe. Tengrism has been noted as more centralized, less polytheistic, less myth-intensive and more historically focused than the paganism that grew out of the western Proto-Indo-European religion. Nonetheless, the chief god Tengri heaven is considered strikingly similar to the Indo-European sky god Asterisk Dias and the structure of the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European religion is closer to that of the early Turks than to the religion of any people of Near Eastern or Mediterranean antiquity. <laughs> <laughs> Background Tengrists view their existence as sustained by the eternal blue sky Tengri, the fertile mother earth spirit and a ruler regarded as the holy spirit of the sky. Heaven, earth, spirits of nature and ancestors provide for every need and protect all humans. By living an upright, respectful life, a human will keep his world in balance and perfect his personal wind horse, or spirit. 
The Huns of the Northern Caucasus reportedly believed in two gods, Tangri Khan or Tengri Khan, considered identical to the Persian Aspandiyat and for whom horses were sacrificed, and Kwa, whose victims are struck by lightning. Tengrism is practiced in Saka, Beriatia, Tuva and Mongolia in parallel with Tibetan Buddhism and Birkinism. Kirga means we are 40. In the Kirga language, a reference to the 40 clans of Manus, a legendary hero who united 40 regional clans against the Uyghurs, Kyrgyzstan's flag has 40 uniformly spaced rays. Several Kirga politicians are advocating Tengrism to fill a perceived ideological void. Dastan Serigalov, Secretary of State and former chair of the Kyrgyz State Gold Mining Company, established the Tengir Ordo Army of Tengri, a civic group promoting the values and traditions of Tengrism. Serigalov also heads a Tengrist society in Bishkek claiming nearly 500,000 followers and an international scientific center of Tengrist studies. Articles on Tengrism have been published in social scientific journals in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan President Nursultan Nazarbayev and former Kyrgyz President Askar Akayev have called Tengrism the national natural religion of the Turkic peoples. <laughs> Symbols Gun Anna, the sun, featured in most flags. Ame, goddess of fertility and virginity. Bialgan, greatest deity, after Tengri. Erklig, god of space. Erlik, god of death. Flag of Saka Republic. Flag of Kazakhstan. Flag of Chuvashir. Gokturk coins. Tree of life. Oksako. Topic. Tengri Tengrism was brought to Eastern Europe by the Bulgars. It lost importance when the Ugharic Kagans proclaimed Manichaeism the state religion in the 8th century. Tengrism also played a large role in the religion of the Gok Turk and Mongol empires. Gok Turk translates as celestial Turk. Genghis Khan and several generations of his followers were Tengrian believers until his fifth generation descendant, Uzbeg Khan, turned to Islam in the 14th century. The original Mongol Khans, followers of Tengri, were known for their tolerance of other religions. Monkey Khan, the fourth great Khan of the Mongol Empire, said, We believe that there is only one God, by whom we live and by whom we die and for whom we have an upright heart. But as God gives us the different fingers of the hand, so he gives to men diverse ways to approach him." Account of the Mongols. Diary of William Rubruck. Religious debate in court documented by William of Rubruck on May 31, 1254. Three World Cosmology As in most ancient beliefs, there is a celestial world and an underground world in Tengrism. The only connection between these realms is the tree of worlds that is in the center of the worlds. The celestial and the subterranean world are divided into seven layers the underworld sometimes nine layers and the celestial world seventeen layers. Shamans can recognize entries to travel into these realms. In the multiples of these realms, there are beings, living just like humans on the earth. They also have their own respected souls and shamans and nature spirits. Sometimes these beings visit the earth, but are invisible to people. They manifest themselves only in a strange sizzling fire or a bark to the shaman. Topic: <inaudible> Subterranean world, underworld. There are many similarities between the earth and the underworld and its inhabitants resemble humans but have only two souls instead of three. They lack the Amy soul that produces body temperature and allows breathing. Therefore, they are pale and their blood is dark. 
The Sun and the Moon of the Underworld give far less light than the Sun and the Moon of the Earth. There are also forests, rivers and settlements underground. Erlik Khan, Mongolian, Erleg Khan, one of the sons of Tengri, is the ruler of the underworld. He controls the souls here, some of them waiting to be reborn again. If a sick human is not dead yet, a shaman can move to the underworld to negotiate with Erlik to bring the person back to life. If he fails, the person dies. Topic. Heavenly world The celestial world has many similarities with the Earth, but is undefiled by humans. There is a healthy, untouched nature here, and the natives of this place have never deviated from the traditions of their ancestors. This world is much brighter than the Earth and is under the auspices of Ulgan another son of Tengri. Shamans can also visit this world. On some days, the doors of this heavenly world are opened and the light shines through the clouds. During this moment, the prayers of the shamans are most influential. A shaman performs his imaginary journey, which takes him to the heavens, by riding a black bird, a deer, or a horse, or by going into the shape into these animals. Otherwise, he may scale the world tree or pass the rainbow to reach the heavenly world. Topic. View of the world According to the adherents of Tengrism, the world is not only a three-dimensional environment, but also a rotating circle. Everything is bound by this circle and the tire is always renewed without stopping. The three dimensions of the Earth consists of the movement of the Sun, the season which are constantly moving, and the souls of all creatures that are born again after death. Three souls of human It is believed that people and animals have many souls. Generally, each person is considered to have three souls, but the names, characteristics and numbers of the souls may be different among some of the tribes, for example, for Samoyeds, a Mongol tribe living in the north of Siberia, believe that women consist of four and men of five souls. Since animals also have souls, humans must respect animals. Topic: <inaudible> Soul types. According Paulson and Jultkratz, who conducted research in North America, North Asia and Central Asia by Paulson and Jultkratz, explained two souls of this belief are the same to all people. Nephis breath or NAFs, life or bodily spirit. Shadow soul, free soul. Topic: <inaudible> Soul names. There are many different names for human souls among the Turks and the Mongols, but their features and meanings have not been adequately researched yet. Among Turks, Ozat, Sune, Kut, Sur, Salkan, Tin, Kormos, Yula. Among Mongols, Sunasan, Armin, Kut, Suldi. In addition to these spirits, Jean Paul Roux draws attention to the Ozkanak spirit mentioned in the writings from the Buddhist periods of the Yugas. Julie Stewart, who devoted her life to research in Mongolia, described the belief in the soul in one of her articles. Armin Ruhu, provides breathing and body temperature. It is the soul which invigorates. The Turkish counterpart is probably Ozit. Sunasan Ruhu, outside of the body, this soul moves through water. It is also the part of soul, which reincarnates. After a human died, this part of the soul moves to the world tree. When it is reborn, it comes out of a source and enters the newborn, also called Sune Ruhu among Turks. Suld Ruhu, it is the soul of the self that gives a person a personality. If the other souls leave the body, they only lost consciousness, but if this soul leaves the body, the human dies. This soul resides in nature after death and is not reborn. Central Asia 
A revival of Tengrism has played a role in Central Asian Turkic nationalism since the 1990s. It developed in Tatarstan, where the Tengrist periodical Bizning Yul appeared in 1997. The movement spread during the 2000s to Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan and, to a lesser extent, Beriatia and Mongolia. Temdeg symbol and Tengriism Temdeg writing Temdeg the term, shamanism, was first applied by Western anthropologists as outside observers of the ancient religion of the Turks and Mongols, as well as those of the neighboring Tungusic and Samoyedic speaking peoples. Upon observing more religious traditions across the world, some Western anthropologists began to also use the term in a very broad sense. The term was used to describe unrelated magico-religious practices found within the ethnic religions of other parts of Asia, Africa, Australasia and even completely unrelated parts of the Americas, as they believed these practices to be similar to one another. Since the 1990s, Russian language literature uses Tengrinstvo Tengrism", or Tengrinity", in the general sense of Mongolian shamanism. Beriat scholar Irina S. Urbaneva developed a theory of Tengrinist esoteric traditions in Central Asia after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the revival of national sentiment in the former Soviet republics of Central Asia. Although Tengrism has few active adherents, its revival of a national religion reached a larger audience in intellectual circles. Presenting Islam as foreign to the Turkic peoples, adherents are found primarily among the nationalistic parties of Central Asia. Tengrism may be interpreted as a Turkic version of Russian neopaganism. A related phenomenon is the revival of Zoroastrianism in Tajikistan. By 2006, a Tengrist society in Bishkek, an international scientific center of Tengrist studies, and a civic group Tengir Ordo, the Army of Tengri, were established by Kirga businessman and politician Dastan Serigalov. His ideology incorporated ethnocentrism and pan-Turkism, but did not receive strong support. After the Kyrgyzstani presidential elections of 2005, Serigalov became state secretary and set up a workgroup dealing with ideological issues. Another Kyrgyz proponent of Tengrism, Kubanichbek Tezikbayev, was prosecuted for inciting religious and ethnic hatred in 2011 with statements in an interview describing Kyrgyz mullahs as former alcoholics and murderers. Topic: <laughs> Argan's letters. Argan expressed the association of Tengri with imperial legitimacy and military success. The majesty of the Khan is a divine stamp granted by Tengri to a chosen individual through which Tengri controls the world order the presence of Tengri in the Khan. In this letter, Tengri, or Monkey Tengri, Eternal Heaven, is at the top of the sentence. In the middle of the magnified section, the phrase Tengri Yin Kuchen, power of Tengri, forms a pause before it is followed by the phrase Kargan Yu Su, Majesty of the Khan. Under the power of the eternal Tengri. Under the majesty of the Khan, Kublai Khan. Argan our word. To the Ired Farans, King of France. Last year you sent your ambassadors led by Ma Ba Sorma telling us. If the soldiers of the Il Khan ride in the direction of Mizir Egypt, we ourselves will ride from here and join you." Which words we have approved and said in reply, "...praying to Tengri heaven, we will ride on the last month of winter on the year of the tiger and descend on Dimisk Damascus on the fifteenth of the first month of spring." Now, if, being true to your words, you send your soldiers at the appointed time and, worshipping Tengri, we conquer those citizens of Damascus together, we will give you Oroslim Jerusalem. 
How can it be appropriate if you were to start amassing your soldiers later than the appointed time and appointment? What would be the use of regretting afterwards? Also, if, adding any additional messages, you let your ambassadors fly to us on wings, sending us luxuries, falcons, whatever precious articles and beasts there are from the land of the Franks, the power of Tengri, Tengri Yin Kuchin, and the majesty of the Khan Kargan Yusu, only knows how we will treat you favorably. With these words we have sent Muscarel the Korchi. Our writing was written while we were at Condlon on the sixth Kuakid sixth day of the old moon of the first month of summer on the year of the cow. Argon expressed Tengrism's non-dogmatic side. The name Monkey Tengri, Eternal Tengri, is at the top of the sentence in this letter to Pope Nicholas IV, in accordance with Mongolian Tengriist writing rules. The words Tngri Tengri and Zrlg Zalig decree order are still written with vowel less archaism. Your saying may the Ilkhan receive Silam baptism is legitimate. We say we the descendants of Genghis Khan, keeping our own proper Mongol identity, whether some receive Silam or some don't. That is only for eternal Tengri heaven to know decide. People who have received Silam and who, like you, have a truly honest heart and are pure, do not act against the religion and orders of the Eternal Tengri and of Misika Messiah or Christ. Regarding the other peoples, those who, forgetting the Eternal Tengri and disobeying him, are lying and stealing, are there not many of them? Now, you say that we have not received Silam, you are offended and harbor thoughts of discontent. But if one prays to eternal Tengri and carries righteous thoughts, it is as much as if he had received Silam. We have written our letter in the year of the tiger, the fifth of the new moon of the first summer month May 14, 1290, when we were in Urumi. <laughs> Terms for shaman and shamaness in Siberian languages Shaman, Saman, Nedigal, Nane, Ulcha, Oric, Sama, Manchu. The variant, Saman, i.e., pronounced, Shaman, is a Venk whence it was borrowed into Russian. Shaman, Alman, Alman, Woolman, Yukagir. Shaman, Qam, Tata, Shaw, Oirat, Xam, Tuva, Tafala. The Beriat word for Shaman is B, Bu, Bo stroke, from early Mongolian Boj. Shaman, Nate, Kanti, Mansi, from Proto Uralic asterisk Nojta, C, F. Sami Noaidi. Shamaness, Aduan, Mongol, Udan, Yakut, Udagan, Beriat, Udagan, Avenki, Lamet, Odagan, Nedigal. Related forms found in various Siberian languages include Utigan, Ubikan, Utigan, Utugan, Aduan, or Dwana. All these are related to the Mongolian name of Etugan, the hearth goddess, and Etugan Eek Mother Earth. Maria Zarplika points out that Siberian languages use words for male shamans from diverse roots, but the words for female shaman are almost all from the same root. She connects this with the theory that women's practice of shamanism was established earlier than men's, that shamans were originally female. Buddhism and Tengrism The 17th-century Mongolian chronicle Alton Tobchi Golden Summary contains references to Tengri. Tengrism was assimilated into Mongolian Buddhism while surviving in purer forms only in far northern Mongolia. Tengrist formulas and ceremonies were subsumed into the state religion. This is similar to the fusion of Buddhism and Shinto in Japan. The Alton Tobchi contains the following prayer at its very end. Topic: <laughs> Islam and Tengrism. Islam is based on a written corpus. Doctrines and religious law derive from the Quran and are explained by hadith. 
In contrast, Tengrism is based on personal relationship with spirits and personal experiences, that can not be fixated in writings, thus there can be no dogma or official religious functionary. In this regard, both belief systems are fundamentally distinct. However, many Tengrists probably identified dervishes as something similar to shamans. It was due to Sufism, shamanic practices were assimilated to Islam. First contact between shamanistic Turks and Islam took place against the Chinese Tang dynasty in the Battle of Talas. Turkic shamanism further influenced parts of Sufism and folk Islam. Many shamanistic beliefs were considered as genuine Islamic by many average Muslims and even prevailed today. Turkic worship of Tengri was mocked by the Muslim Turk Mahmud al Kashgari, who wrote, The infidels, may God destroy them. According to Kashgari, Muhammad assisted in a miraculous event where 700,000 Yabik infidels were defeated by 40,000 Muslims led by Arslan Tegin. Fires shot sparks at the Yabik from gates on a green mountain. The Yabik were a Turkic people. Topic: <laughs> Tengrism in the secret history of the Mongols. Tengri is mentioned many times in the secret history of the Mongols written in 1240. The book starts by listing the ancestors of Genghis Khan starting from Bort Chino Blue Wolf born with "...destiny from Tengri". Bodonka Munkig the ninth generation ancestor of Genghis Khan is called a "...son of Tengri". When Temujin was brought to the Kwanjirat tribe at nine years old to choose a wife, Dei Setsun of the Kwanjirat tells Yeshuge the father of Temujin Genghis Khan that he dreamt of a white falcon, grasping the sun and the moon, come and sit on his hands. He identifies the sun and the moon with Yeshuge and Temujin. Temujin then encounters Tengri in the mountains at the age of twelve. The Tai Chud had come for him when he was living with his siblings and mother in the wilderness, subsisting on roots, wild fruits, sparrows and fish. He was hiding in the thick forest of Turguan Heights. After three days hiding he decided to leave and was leading his horse on foot when he looked back and noticed his saddle had fallen. Temujin says, I can understand the belly strap can come loose, but how can the breast strap also come loose? Is Tengri persuading me? He waited three more nights and decided to go out again, but a tent sized rock had blocked the way out. Again he said, Is Tengri persuading me? returned and waited three more nights. Finally, he lost patience after nine days of hunger and went around the rock, cutting down the wood on the other side with his arrow whittling knife, but as he came out, the Taichud were waiting for him there and promptly captured him. Tokrul later credits the defeat of the Merkits with Jamukha and Temujin to the "...mercy of mighty Tengri", paragraph 113. Korchi of the Baran tells Temujin of a vision given by "...Zaran Tengri", where a bull raises dust and asks for one of his horns back after charging the Gurkhart of Jamukha Temujin's rival, while another ox harnessed itself to a big Gurkhart on the main road and followed Temujin, bellowing. Heaven and earth have agreed to make Temujin the lord of the nation and I am now carrying the nation to you." Temujin afterward tells his earliest companions Borchi and Zelm that they will be appointed to the highest posts because they first followed him when he was "...mercifully looked upon by Tengri." Paragraph 125. In the Battle of Kuitan, Bayurik Khan and Kuduga try using Zad stones to cause a thunderstorm against Temujin but it backfires and they get stuck in slippery mud. They say, "...the wrath of Tengri is upon us," and flee in disorder paragraph 143. Temujin prays to "...father Tengri," on a high hill with his belt around his neck after defeating the Taichud at Sight Sagan Tal and taking 100 horses and 50 breastplates. He says, "'I haven't become lord thanks to my own bravery, but I have defeated my enemies thanks to the love of my father mighty Tengri." When Nilka Sengum the son of Tokrul Khan tries to convince him to attack Temujin, Tokrul says, how can I think evil of my son Temujin? 
If we think evil of him when he is such a critical support to us, Tengri will not be pleased with us." After Nilka Sengum throws a number of tantrums Tokral finally relents and says, "'I was afraid of Tengri and said how can I harm my son? If you are really capable, then you decide what you need to do." When Borchi and Ogadi return wounded from the battle against Tokral, Genghis Khan strikes his chest in anguish and says, "'May eternal Tengri decide!' Paragraph 172. Genghis Khan tells Alton and Kuka all of you refuse to become Khan, that is why I led you as Khan. If you would have become Khan the first would have charged first in battle and brought you the best women and horses if High Kuk Tengri showed us favor and defeated our enemies." After defeating the Karates Genghis Khan says, By the blessing of Eternal Tengri I have brought low the Karate nation and ascended the High Throne. Paragraph 187. Genghis sends Subutai with an iron cart to pursue the sons of Totoa and tells him, If you act exposed though hidden, near though far and maintain loyalty then Supreme Tengri will bless you and support you. Paragraph 199. Jamuka tells Temujin. I had no trustworthy friends, no talented brothers and my wife was a talker with great words. That is why I have lost to you Temujin, blessed and destined by Father Tengri. Genghis Khan appoints Shikahutig chief judge of the empire in 1206 and tells him, Be my eyes to see and ears to hear when I am ordering the empire through the blessing of eternal Tengri. Paragraph 203. Genghis Khan appoints Mukali. Gui Wong. Because he transmitted the word of Tengri when I was sitting under the spreading tree in the valley of Korkunig Jabur where Hotula Khan used to dance. Paragraph 206. He gives Korchi of the Baran thirty wives because he promised Korchi he would fulfill his request for thirty wives. If what you say comes true through the mercy and power of Tengri. Paragraph 207. Genghis mentions both eternal Tengri and heaven and earth. When he says, By the mercy of eternal Tengri and the blessing of heaven and earth I have greatly increased in power, united all the great nation and brought them under my reins. Paragraph 224. Genghis orders Dorbe the fierce of the Dorbet tribe to strictly govern your soldiers, pray to eternal Tengri and try to conquer the Kori Tumd people. Paragraph 240. After being insulted by Asha Kambu of the Tangas of being a weak Khan Genghis Khan says, If eternal Tengri blesses me and I firmly pull my golden reins, then things will become clear at that time. Paragraph 256. When Asha Kambu of the Tangut insults him again after his return from the Khwarezmian campaign Genghis Khan says, How can we go back to Mongolia when he says such proud words? Though I die I won't let these words slip. Eternal Tengri, you decide. Paragraph 265. After Genghis Khan. Ascends to Tengri. Paragraph 268 During his successful campaign against the Tangut the wheels of the returning funeral cart get stuck in the ground and Gilugdi Bator of the Sunud says, My horse-mounted divine lord born with destiny from Kuk Tengri, have you abandoned your great nation? Batu Khan sends a secret letter to Ogadi Khan saying, under the power of the eternal Tengri, under the majesty of my uncle the Khan, we set up a great tent to feast after we had broken the city of Megd, conquered the Orisud Russians, brought in eleven nations from all directions and pulled on our golden reins to hold one last meeting before going our separate directions paragraph 275. See also Heaven worship Manzan Gurm today Hungarian neo-paganism Religion in China Notes <laughs>